Do you feel a little bummed about the pandemic ruining Halloween? Do you feel like you don't really have anything to dress up for? Are you not even sure what you would even be? Well, I am here to help you with all that. Hello, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to talk about costumes, but not just any costumes, fancy dress costumes through history, which are just perfect for Halloween. In fact, Kiralee Cosplay and I are hosting the Historical Halloween Challenge on Instagram this year because we feel that everyone should have an opportunity to dress up. For the Historical Halloween Challenge, all you have to do is pick out your favorite vintage or historical fancy dress costume, make it, and share your progress or your finished product on Instagram using the hashtag HistoricalHalloween2020. Still not sure what to make? That's exactly what this video is for. I'm going to take you on a little tour through time, looking at fancy dress costumes through the ages. We're going to start in the 1860s. The images you're seeing here are fancy dress designs by Charles Frederick Worth from the V&A's collection. There's a link to the complete collection in the description. You will notice that some of the ideas here include a rainbow, a peacock, games, the dawn, and even hell. In general, though, they are all artistic expressions of various real-life things and things in nature. According to the V&A website, Empress Eugenie threw a series of elaborate masquerade balls in the 1860s, which greatly popularized both these designs and worth in general as a designer. One of the things that you will notice here, as well as with the rest of the fancy dress designs we're going to look at, is that they are almost all significantly shorter than the other dresses of their time. You see, the idea of a sexy Halloween costume is nothing new. Now we're going to jump forward in time a little to 1888 and take a look at Weldon's fancy dress catalog. This complete catalog can be found online and the link to it is in the description. As far as I can tell, Weldon's fancy dress catalog started in 1886. And I say that because the 1888 catalog is titled Volume 3. Weldon's is a great source for fancy dress ideas from the 1880s through the 1930s, but do be warned, if you go to do a search for them on Google or Pinterest, you will likely come across many racist and culturally insensitive costumes from history as well. Please check out Kira Lee's video on this topic, which I have linked down below and up above. Anyway, back to 1888. In the 1888 catalog, we see a lot of costume ideas based on characters. Many of these are characters from history, such as Marie Antoinette and Lady Jane Grey, funny, also the names of my dress forms, or characters from popular culture, aka opera and theater. You can also find some extraneous costumes, such as magpie or mermaid, and we start to see some traditional dress of various cultures, such as Norwegian or Russian. One of the two designs I have selected comes from the 1888 catalog. Actually, it was from a different 1888 publication called Dare Bazaar. This lovely and delicate daisy costume. This catalog includes a one page picture of the costume with the opposing page containing a full description of what fabrics and colors should be used and their yardage, how things are cut and <laughs> even what the lady choosing this costume should look like, such as her hair color or face shape. This is a wealth of information for anyone looking to recreate these costumes. Now we turn to the 1890s with the catalog from B. Burnett and Company. The delightful thing about looking through these catalogs, any of these catalogs, is that the costumes, other than the period dress ones, largely maintain the popular shape of the era. This is very evident in this 1890s catalog with its large puffed sleeves. This catalog contains information about the fabric needed, like the one from Weldon's, but also lists the prices of the fabric, since it would appear that B. Burnett and company could actually furnish you with those fabrics. This catalog is broken into two categories of costumes. Things, such as music, knight, or a witch, titled Original Suggestions, and National and Historical, which are mostly forms of cultural appropriation. So, yeah. That said, I am a big fan of the witch, and I can only imagine how beautiful the rainbow would have been in color. Moving to an amazing, though slightly different resource from the 1890s, we have a publication titled Fancy Dresses Described, or What to Wear at Fancy Dress Balls, by Arden Holt. 
This is a fantastic resource for someone feeling a little bit more creative. There are some pictures, but most of it is just an alphabetical list of costume ideas, with a paragraph description of each. My favorite one with a picture is probably the new woman. Scandalous. <laughs> the link for this is also in the description below. Click the section arrows to access each section of the publication. But you know what? It's only about one and a half months till Halloween. Maybe tackling something from the Victorian era seems a little daunting for that stretch of time. So let's jump ahead 20 years to the late 19 teens and check out one of the resources that started this whole project. Because in fact, Kiralee and I started this collaboration because we each own a copy of Weldon's fancy dress catalog, and we were both planning to create something from our own catalog anyway. So why not do it together and open it up to the whole costuming community, right? This catalog is the one that I own, which was given to me by my mom a few years ago. Although there's not a date on it, I can tell that it's from the late 19 teens, both by the general style of the dresses, as well as, specifically, a page of costumes called Great Britain and Her Allies. Another page that contains costumes such as Peace and Victory, Victory, Peace, England, and Allied Victory. <laughs> and a bonus other costume of war savings. Weldon's, by the way, is a pattern company. Unlike B. Burnett & Company, Weldon's only sells patterns, and the ladies' patterns come in a whopping three waist sizes, 22 inch, 24 inch, and 26 inch. So size inclusive. <sighs> it does have patterns, or at least for our modern use ideas, for men, women, and children though, so you can find something in it for your whole family. This catalog contains some of the same ideas from the previous catalogs we've looked at, such as historical figures, theatrical characters, or things like night or various flowers. It also contains many of the traditional dress ideas that were in the 1890s catalog. Unfortunately, in the 19-teens catalog, it takes it way too far. We have very clearly left appreciation territory and moved deep into appropriation, complete with yellow face and black face. It's bad. And sadly, the newer Weldon's catalogs get even worse. That said, it does have very many excellent new costumes. Silly things such as the press, a potato, Christmas cracker, or house to let. <laughs> and it also contains the other design I will be creating, a hussif. Hussifs are so hot in the costuming community right now, and so appropriate for me <laughs> that I'm super excited to see that design in there. One of the different things about these more modern catalogs, though, is that there is no description, just a name and the drawing. So without access to the old patterns, and I couldn't find any available online, you just have to kind of wing it with the patterns that you have available to you. The later Weldon's catalogs from the 20s and 30s are quite similar to the one from the 19-teens, but also start to add a lot of fun advertising ideas into the fancy dress options. Some of my favorites are for OK Sauce, Heinz Products, and McLean's Toothpaste. They also have some great, truly weird costumes. That said, Kirley has done a great video on those later catalogs because that's what she has in her collection. So if you haven't watched her video yet, definitely go check it out and see some of those strange and quirky designs. Chubby umbrella, anyone? So, are you feeling a bit better? Filled with lots of ideas and inspiration for your Halloween costume? Excited to dress up and join us in our hashtag historical Halloween 2020 challenge? Leave me a comment with what you plan to make. Anyway, I do hope that I was able to bring a bit of spooky Halloween fun and excitement to you and that you found this video interesting and enjoyable. If you liked the video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs on Tuesdays and my regular content on Fridays, but I post every day over on Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you would like to support more fun content on my channel, I have a link to my Kofi or coffee account in the description. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great week. Good luck on your fancy dress project. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing.